and welcome back to my channel the m, &M life um first and foremost happy new year i hope and pray that you had a safe holiday season and that you're ready and prepared and renewed to get through 2019 i pray that this is your best year yet um so today let's kind of get into it um i have received a lot of questions a lot of you have been following my journey and i received a lot of dms either through the m&m life instagram my personal instagram or student doctor network asking me what exactly my program is how to apply things like that and so i figured it'd be best to just make this simple frequently asked questions video about my program so you can hear it from a student perspective um, I know when I was applying to this program, there was not a lot online from a student's perspective outside of the school's website to help me learn whether this was the right program for me or whether I wanted to pursue something different. So this is my way of kind of adding something to your toolbox to be able to discern whether this is where you need to be or not. So for those of you, I, by the way, I also have some frequently asked questions listed on my phone and some notes that I want to make sure I cover for you guys. So once again, if you see me looking down, that's why. Um, so first and foremost, what is my program? I attend the Ohio State University. Um, the post program is called MedPath and it's housed under the College of Medicine. Um, and I actually think it's an excellent opportunity for pre-med students and not a lot of people know about it. So um, the first question I get asked all the time is, what is MedPath? So MedPath is a post -bac program housed under the College of Medicine, consisting of a cohort of 15 people. Um, it is only a year-long program. It is non-degree granting, so it's not like a master's program or anything that you will get a degree out of. However, it is a way for you to strengthen your science background. It's a way for you to kind of get your footing and learn how studying will work for you once medical school kicks in. What else? So MedPath is a post bac program that comes with a conditional acceptance to the Ohio State University College of Medi Medicine excuse me, for the next incoming fall class. So your seat is already secured. All you have to do is come into the program, meet all the requirements, do what you're supposed to do, and as long as you do that, you will matriculate into med school and become an M1 that fall. So for example, I applied to MedPath coming out of school. Well, during my senior year at Spelman, got accepted. I'm in, I finished my first semester, going back for second semester. After that's done, meet all the requirements. This fall, fall 2019, I will be an M1 at Ohio State University College of Medicine, God willing. So it's a very quick program that's only 15. So you have, if you like close knit community or you just don't like being lost in big numbers in a program, this is definitely a program for you. So how do I apply to MedPath? Um, you have to, I repeat, have to be committed to the medical school application cycle in order to apply to MedPath. You have to submit a, um, your MCAS application with Ohio State University as a designation on your MCAS. Um, and from there, you submit your secondary to OSU and you have to be referred or invited to apply to the program. And you can only do that through submitting your MCAS. So if you want to attend this program as a post back option, be aware that you do still have to submit an MCAS application for the current med school application cycle. So once you do that and you're invited to the program, you fill out another application. You submit that back, they review it, and then you get called back for an interview. The interview is with the College of Medicine. It's not with, you know, staff from the from the post back program or from the MedPath program. This is your med school interview. So once you do this interview, they review you and you either get accepted or rejected. Um, once you're accepted, a lot of people ask, is there anything more that you have to do application-wise? And the answer is no. This application serves as your medical school application, and if you choose to attend this program, all you have to do is meet the requirements for this program, and you're good to go. You don't have to, you know, fill out another MCAS application and this, that, and the other. There, granted, there are some things you have to do paperwork-wise, but in terms of sitting and actually filling out your 15 experiences again, reapplying, having to re-interview, none of that. You're done. So that's one thing that I liked about this program is that I will never have to go through this again as long as I do what I'm supposed to do. Um, 
Another question that I get asked is, what is the program like? So, of course, I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak about my own experience. And I like the program. Um, I've met amazing people. It's not one of those programs where everybody is exactly the same. Um, so, for example, I'm one of the youngest people in my cohort. Um, so don't feel that there's like an age cutoff or anything like that. That's not the case at all. There's a wide range of people, a wide range, a wide range of experiences. If you've been out, out of school for a couple of years and you're worried about it, it doesn't matter. Um, we literally come from all different types of walks of life. Um, a couple of us are here straight from undergrad. A couple have been out of undergrad for a couple of years. Other people have had jobs um, and have come back. So whatever your situation is, don't worry that you'll feel like the eyeball out because that's simply not the case. Um, so how is it structured? We do attend classes. Classes may vary. Um, most classes are at the grad level. Um, and I mean, it's school. So you go to class, you study, you do well. Um, there are other opportunities. You get matched with a mentor. Um, there are opportunities for learning study strategies and things like that. Um, so, I mean, it's valuable. I have learned a lot about myself so far in terms of how I study best, what really works for me. And I feel that those are things that I can carry into my M1 year and not feel so overwhelmed when I get there. Like, okay, how should I study for this? I don't really know if this is gonna work for me. That's not the case because I've spent this year really learning what works for me. The way I studied in undergrad would not cut it um, in med school. Like, it just won't. Granted, it was fine for that season, but it's a different type of studying. The volume of work is much higher than what you had in undergrad. So having this year to kind of get my footing was also very helpful for me. And so the last question that I typically get asked is, what does my day look like? Um, a lot of people are worried about, you know, if I have a family, will I have time for them, whatever the case may be. And long story short, the answer is yes. Um, just like anything, learning to balance your time and time management, I still make time to go to the gym, meal prep, cook dinner. like. It, you're more than capable of being able to have an outside life. I still find time to do my ministry things um, and still study and get good grades. And I still did well last semester. So it's all about how you structure your time. So a typical day for me, I get up very early. Um, so I could wake up at 6 a.m. and I have a class till 9 and get some stuff done. So I get up early, usually have my morning devotional. I do make breakfast every day. I have to have breakfast. If I don't, I feel like I'm starving. So for me, that's the thing I have to do. So I make myself breakfast, get dressed, head out the door, usually get to campus around nine, go to my first class. And my mindset is that I study and I had a break from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. So during that time, that's when I took the time to study because in my mind, once I get out of my classes and I'm home, and done everything that needs to be done for the day. I prefer for my home to be my sanctuary, my place to kind of decompress. I don't want to study all day at school and then come home at 5, 6 p.m., cook dinner, and then study again till midnight. Um, I kind of have a cutoff time for myself. And once I enter my home, that's my chance for serenity. And I can light a candle, relax, take a break. Um, so that's typically what I do. I work very hard from about 7 a.m., till about 6 37 and after that if it's not done it's not getting done until the next day but that's just something that i instituted for myself because i know what works for me um so that's another thing just learning what works for you outside of just studying but how to incorporate that into your life so that you're not all academics 24 7 and you're not feeling overwhelmed so that's basically all i wanted to really touch on is making sure, making sure you knew what exactly this program is a lot of people don't understand the concept that it is a conditional acceptance to med school, which actually um, draws a lot of people who do know about the program. But then also making sure that you're aware that you do still have to submit an MCAS application. Um, I hear of so many people who hear about the program too late and they wanna do it until they realize that it's not like a lot of other standalone post -back programs and you do actually have to apply through MCAS. Um, so I just want to make sure that those were two aspects that you are well aware of to help you really make a decision that will benefit you 
um, and your future. So once again, if you have specific questions about the program, I didn't go into too many specifics because this was a very general video to address the major frequently asked questions that I get. But if you want to know more about my personal experience, my personal journey at OSU, don't hesitate to ask. You can DM me on my personal Instagram. I'll drop it here. Um, you can DM me on the Eminem Life Instagram, which I'll also drop at the bottom. Um, I'm honestly very accessible. A couple of you found me on SDN and reached out to me. Whatever the case may be, I am more than welcome to talking to you about my journey. So as always, thank you guys so, so much for um, watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I wish you all the best in wherever you are in your personal journey. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.